Are you allowed to cuss? Yeah, I don't care. Just so I don't, like, if I need to censor myself. All right, yeah. I'm hitting record. Yep, I'm recording. All right. How's it going? It's going good. How are you, Chris? <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, my intros are going to be great every time. Um, <laughs> so this is 5 Live. It's not live, and it's not at 5. <laughs> 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 I started the show on Instagram and now it's on YouTube for now. Hey, and it rhymes, so you got to stick rhymes. with it. It rhymes, I know. I should have uh, not been so specific with the title, but um, this is George Berry, if everybody doesn't know. How's it going? You could call it Zoom Tunes. <laughs> Trademark. Um, you're going to sue me for that. When I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do a question first, if that's cool with you. Sure. Um, when you sit down to write, or like on an optimal optimal day, if that exists, what does that like? What does that look like for you? Like, what's your setup? I am perpetually trying to get to that spot where I do have some sort of setup, but it's right. never. Um, I've never gotten to the point where I feel like I've developed a process. Um, it is kind of sporadic. Yeah. Um, I, I thought I was, I was, I was, I had a really productive, like couple weeks or month in fall when I was like out here getting busy and right. write, wrote a few songs or finished a few songs or, or a little bit of both. And, um, I really thought I was getting into a, uh, but then it kind of all came to an end with a few things going on that I just couldn't get, get back out here. Um, well, that's normal. I mean, but you, yeah, exactly. How, how fast do you go to the recording? Is it like you have to have it done kind of and then you start recording or are you just going on there? Because I, it, I, nowadays I'm just on there. I'm recording. Nice. Yeah, no, I I guess a lot of times I, I do kind of wait mm -hmm. until it's done. Um, even though um, I guess other times, yeah, it's the recording is a part of the writing process, right? right. As yeah. you're arranging it, like if you have a verse and a chorus, you know, you could record, arrange the whole song and then just fill in the gaps. Right. Um, and I guess a lot of times when I'm writing for other stuff, like the wave, uh, the wave stuff, uh, yeah. we amplify voices and stuff like that definitely lead, lean more towards, um, towards that method. Um, do you get usually inspired like by something that you're thinking like a lyric or are you getting like a melody or a groove or a drums or a guitar first? I am inspired by musical ideas a lot of times, but I'd say more so when it comes to actually writing a song that ends up getting finished. It's um, it's inspired by a line um, which, you know, encapsulates the song. You know, um, it's it's a lyrical idea and, and a melodic idea, and um, it kind of it has the whole song in this little yeah. <laughs> this little uh, segment you know that little seed of an idea yeah and i just that's that's all it is for a long yeah. time but it sits there and dormant waiting for that you know it could be a month later it could be years later it starts to flow and yeah. um you get re-inspired by it in right. a different way and it and it actually can be finished <laughs> right i've got this uh this new idea that li i i'm having a hard time but it's like uh this house is full of animals, but I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> and <laughs> and that's that's like, kind of it. I've had that. Like, that's sweet. For, well, that's a, it's a newer idea, but I just haven't been able to, um, you know, take it to that next step yet. Right. It's all there, but it just yeah. needs to be fleshed out. Uh, that's a great version of that because it does. I can already like I know what that song's mm -hmm. gonna be. Well, do you want to do a song? Sure. I just put out a new single. It's called Family Tree. So this song was inspired by the death of my grandmother. I wasn't really planning on it, but I ended up playing it at her funeral. Wow. And then I ended up playing it at a few other funerals after that, which wow. is, so it like became my funeral song, which was sort of, <laughs> sort of strange and unexpected. But it also kind of, you know, gave the song a little bit uh, more life than it might have had if it, you know. If right. it just sat on the shelf. So this is Family Tree. Right. 
writing you a letter Not sure that's what we Sending you a postcard Feel I've got the need To say Today we walk down the path you pay Stepping on stones Each place carefully in the clay I know one day path will wash away But your love won't wash away Is forever here to stay I mean you'll forever be Living in the family tree Have you ever heard the same? Like father, like son Each time the apple falls A little further from the one It becomes tree Roots stick deep Branches they wave As if about to speak I know one day These will blow away But your love won't blow away Is ever here to stay I mean you'll forever be Living in the family tree As they wait As if about to speak I know one day These will blow away But your love won't blow away Is forever here to stay I mean you'll forever be Living in a family tree Ooh. Yeah. Family tree <laughs> So I have a question for you, Mr. Chris Shaw When did you know you wanted to be a musician? Hmm. Was If there was a specific turning point Or where you actually knew I'm gonna push for this pro full-time musician thing. Yeah. Um, the only real turning point in my life was my um, my job when I, w I got out of college because I was doing graphic design and um, I was working a freelance job. I'm pretty sure I've told this story before, but got it. Um, basically like I could tell right away that I didn't want to do it, do it. And it was like this corporate thing. So the guy basically was like, yeah, I don't want, we don't want you back. I was like, well, why? And, and they were like, well, you don't, you didn't leave. You kind of left at six every day. And I was working like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing this. This is dumb. <laughs> uh -huh. For me, I was sure enough of myself, like, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing this. And I was lucky, really, really lucky to have, um, you know, my parents were always supportive of music and, you know, they, the big, big, big thing was they paid for my college. So yeah, I, I, you know, in a spoiled way, I was like, well, I don't have to do this. And that's a great representation of my privilege that I'm just like fully aware of like, yeah. yep, I wouldn't have been able to make that decision. And, and most people in that job probably wouldn't have either. And they would have said, well, I'm going to take this 30 bucks an hour. Cause you know, in 2000, 
whatever whenever i graduated uh, yeah. college that was pretty good and it's still pretty good you know the other thing was like my my band in high school we were like a fully gigging band we had like two, i think one or two pas uh and two albums under our name so I mean, at the age of like 17, I was already doing this. So yeah, I mean, we were recording in the studio, we were making records, we were playing gigs at bars. Looking back, I'm like, I, I was kind of already doing it. I didn't think about it then though. It was like, mm -hmm. we talk, my, my bandmates we from high school, we talk on a group chat on WhatsApp. And uh, I'm like, I, the other day I was like, what? how do we get gigs? <laughs> like, who was booking the gigs? Because you didn't charge very much. <laughs> well, yeah, but I wasn't, I wasn't doing oh. anything, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah, like who was actually booking it and making <laughs> yeah. it happen? Yeah, like... I, I have early gigs where I wonder how they happened. Like, was yeah. that really me trying to, and like, right. make that happen? I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, I was not, I wasn't doing it. The singer of the band's sister's boyfriend at the time was like helping us out. So I think he might have been kind of helping book, um, but we were getting paid gigs. It wasn't like I was training for this for a long time and... My dad also would take me on to gigs when I was like 10 years old and play weddings with them and stuff. That's awesome. So it's kind of like you don't know any different um, yeah. in, a good, in a good way. I'm working on this one. Sweet. See you around town, a fire in your eyes, wearing a smile like it's going out of fashion, keeping it upbeat. Despite no melody Beacon of hope among the sadness That you didn't know The way I feel about you It's just the way you see The magic through it all here spotlights on me highlights of darkness wanna see red but my blue lights flashing try to make peace but my insecurity keep coming back in the times always passing bet you didn't know about you all i have nice yeah that's a newer newer one i love that uh <laughs> thanks man yeah, it's a little like a love, little love song mysterious love song type of thing yeah it's kind of funny put those words in there that kind of make you feel like it is but well, mm -hmm. maybe it's not i don't know it's just a metaphor man yeah it is kind of like a it's like a love song to somebody that you just admire their attitude how okay so how did you start music as a job and do you remember your first paid gig let's see so you probably wouldn't count the eighth grade school dance <laughs> when kids started throwing wadded up one dollar bills on the stage for oh, some that's reason good. that's a good thing <laughs> we were playing like blink 182 and green day covers and uh Nice. And I don't know why some somebody started it, and uh, so that's probably actually what inspired me to be a professional musician is those you know that, all that ten, money <laughs> that ten dollars that got thrown on stage like yes. oh. and I'm pretty sure we stopped playing and started like picking <laughs> it up. Pro. Um, I think my first paid gig was uh, Teku Tea Shop in Dublin. Oh. You know, some food and tea. Um, I get that food. And uh, so that was some of my first like solo gig experience where it was like, I'm sitting there with my binder of lyrics, like yep. with my little 
crappy PA, you know, playing mm -hmm. through these covers and I had some friends come out and stuff. Um, and that was probably, you know, that's high school at some point, you know, um, my band in high school, we did play a few bar gigs or, or, you know, little outdoor festival type things, but yeah. you know, I don't think there was much money involved if any, but, what um, was your band's name in high school? Green means go. Nice. <laughs> Mine was the phonetics, which is the word phonetics spelled phonetically. Ah, <laughs> we were great. a uh, bunch of assholes. <laughs> we were literally at a stoplight, like right. green means go. Like, all right, let's do it. The high school band was a little more like jammy, uh, okay. like basically a rock band with a little bit of funkiness. We were uh, kind of the same, like Dave Matthews. We yeah, had, we had a violin in our group, of course. Oh, nice. Every song yeah. was like 17 minutes, you know. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we we were just a trio, and we, we kind of went across the board, like uh, Chili Peppers, Sublime, yep, Peppers. Uh, mm -hmm. but also some like Zeppelin and Hendrix, and cool. so nice. I would come over to like jam, and they'd start playing these Rush tunes. Oh wow! <laughs> like, like we ended up doing like one or two Rush songs, but wow. like you can't jam on some Rush, so I'm. <laughs> standing there like all right like uh, let's, let you guys get it out of your system right, and right. go back to like you know trying to play my really awesome original song That's funny. <laughs> we were able to put out a, a cd but um i think it was like eight songs or something like that and uh yes. i think I, I somewhere there's a stack of them hiding somewhere as far as like becoming a musician you know it was when i was looking at college it was kind of like well, I could maybe do this stuff or this stuff, but it was like, it kind of ended up being like it, my parents paid for my college. And, right. um, you know, same as you, I'm super appreciative of that. And, yeah. um, you know, understand that how big of a privilege that was that, of you know, me doing music or whatever I wanted to do, which, right. um, you know, that's, that's crazy, right? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that sets you up for, okay, now I'm spending four years focusing on music, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that's insane um <laughs> yeah right so this is a a very fresh tune i was working on another song and then this idea for this song came you know out of working on that song like i said i have a stack of tunes i'm trying to get produced up and out into the world um and this is one of them so this one's called pictures <laughs> Strung up pictures of all of our faces in all of the places we've been. Each one was different, a choir of misfits, family of unlikely friends. Followed our footsteps down roads without regrets, climbed up to take in the view. This house caught fire and I could only save one thing you know I'd reach for these memories of you First cup of coffee on a drive across country Even the dead ends feel so alive Made it to the coast and we found it kind of funny Saw an ocean of clouds in the sky Took that picture of me I smiled at you when we tipped our canoe The camera fell in and it got destroyed We laughed about it cause nothing else would fit this overstuffed shoebox of Polaroids. Now looking back, I'm amazed by the fact that the story's held up by a thread. People we met that we won't soon forget, the strangers that acted like friends. First cup of coffee on a drive across country Even the dead ends feel so loud Made it to the coast and we found it kind of funny Saw an ocean of clouds in the sky 
That's when you took that picture of me. I was looking back. All we've been through. I was looking back. These pictures of you. Reminds me of the first cup of coffee on a drive across country. Even the dead ends feel so alive. Made it to the coast and we found it kind of fun. I saw ocean clouds in the sky. So I'll raise my glass to the times that we've had. Pictures we never did take. I'll raise my voice and I'll sing it out loud for the memories we still yet to make. I'll always keep these pictures of you. We strung up pictures of all of our faces from all of the places we've been. Yeah, oh, camera on. Yeah, man. That's a new one. Very you know, cool. my turn to ask a question, and you're. Oh, how about this one? Daily prioritization of what you're supposed to be working on. Uh, it seems so hard as <laughs> being self-employed with kids and music in general. There's so many facets and yeah. mm -hmm. you know lanes that you're supposed to be promoting and booking and writing yeah. and recording and it's insane and yeah, so you, i was wondering if you have any advice and knowledge for me and other musicians on how to actually do what you're supposed to be doing <laughs> right <laughs> i know i know that's a struggle i, I don't know i because i think i feel similar to you you get on a, a trail and you're like man i get all this stuff done and then you just like no oh, i got nothing <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just ebbs and you flows get yeah yeah um, my newest form of thought is like, let things kind of be slow burners and try not to burn out too fast. In other words, so pacing really, um, like you don't have to get it all done Yeah, right so away. Don't be, don't be anxious. Uh, work on kind of what, you know, tr try to consolidate your projects. Um, just not feeling guilty about stuff like I don't know why I feel guilty like oh I want to write a song and make music today like why should I feel guilty about that <laughs> yeah so seriously. and I might I might just go down and just work on a song and that's all I do that day so that's cool mm -hmm. I, I used to get like real anxious or like I'm not gonna do that you know it's more of a mindset so I don't have any performance so that's actually really helpful I don't yeah I'm not really and I'm turning down gigs because I don't I just don't want to I don't feel good about doing them. So, and you know, listening to all these podcasts, you know, they, they always talk about like, do the work, you know, do the work. And that means like, for me, that's like, do the stuff you want to be doing. And actually this five live thing has been a, a priority for me. Cause I just, I really enjoy it. Cause I would be worried normally like, Oh, why am I spending all this time on this? It doesn't make me any money. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm really passionate about it. And you know, I have a Patreon set up, so that's like people paying me for my art. Those people deserve all my passion and, you know, my creativity. So it's like I compartmentalize that into Patreon and say, like, that's what this is for. Even though it can be like for Instagram or whatever, people can watch it. That helps me um, just organize things. Like it's called Five Live. It's always evolving, but it's got a shape to it. And then I can put it in this place. This is passion. This is what I really, really want to do. It's not necessarily money coming in. I mean, the worst is when you have a, a long work session that is all just, you know, busy work, computer, on the computer, yeah. emails or promotion, right. and you don't touch, you know, there's don't no, touch the guitar. there's no music. And, and personally, I've found, you know, it's, it's really hard to just sit down and practice guitar for me because yeah. there's so many other things to be doing. So yeah, I, it's same, same mindset where it's like, yeah, I'm going to play guitar for an hour or two and, yeah. and like forget about everything else. Yeah. And a lot of it for me is that. And because if I work on a song and it, it's great and it feels good and I'm passionate about it, I mean, I have to be doing that. That's part of my work. And if you really want to be, it's, 
I, I have to think of it as life's work rather than like mm. money job work because <laughs> yeah. my life's work is music. And if I don't work on music, I won't get better and I won't I won't get more money, even though mm -hmm. you might I may never get more money. But it, um, all, go, it all goes into it as a musician. I does. mean, the money work, you get more money work from the art, the artwork. And hopefully right. eventually, you know, the art makes money, too, or right. you know, along the way that can that can continue to build so right and i think yeah. um the other thing i'm doing now is i'm starting a nonprofit. so nice it's like that whole organization i'm creating it because i don't want it to fail so like um there will there will be a person doing like marketing and it's not going to be me they'll nice be, you know what i mean there'll be a person doing eventually they'll be doing there'll be a team what, have you released the like what the nonprofit's called and what it is. So it's called Move Your Music Forward. We'll be doing workshops and then we'll also be doing like um, trying to focus on like underserved communities and like it's education, but also like, yeah, what are the communities that like need resources for music? How do we like raise money for them and be like, here's an interface, you know, it's a thousand yeah. bucks. You know what I mean? So yeah, man, I'm really That's excited good about stuff, that. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we, just for background, we, uh, George and I, did this song together in his shed studio where he's at right now and uh he uh he helped produce it it was great um we had a, a, lot a great of fun, time man. we gotta yeah. do another one yeah for sure there it is It's like I'm pulling ahead, finally, then you get back into my life. Oh, you got, you got a real talent for killing me. There it is. <laughs> got my money right. No problems, at least today with my car. You pull your gun right out of our history One, two, three, four shots right to my heart What is this shit that you've been trying to pull? Making a fool out of yourself Well, I don't owe you anything I don't owe you anything you dig it out or something oh uh, i think it's time to dig it out of the ground there it yeah. is yeah what is this shit that you've been trying to pull making a fool out of yourself well i don't owe you anything i don't This is how it's gonna 
nice. Love that song, man. Helping me out. Probably because I put so many hours on it, but. Oh, that's a great one. I mean. I do like that song, dude. I like it. I don't mean it's great, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my question, and this is the third question, is what is one negative and one positive change in your life because of COVID-19? Maybe like the best thing and the worst thing that's happened. Let's or, start or with, whatever. let me try to think of the worst thing. Yeah, yeah, worst first. <laughs> um, you know, just not seeing, pe not being able to hang with people. Not that I, not that I really hung out with people that much anyways, but you know, the gig is more than the money. You know what I mean? Right. There's that after beer hang. Yeah after the gig and uh true you know we're we're missing that you know you yeah. can't really get that through zoom um right. but um so i mean obviously you could say you know for the finances but um right but i guess you know coming from that place of privilege where it's like we're we're doing okay you know um and um i you know there's there has been a few gigs like when it was still warm where right. it's like, hey, this is like, this is cool, man. Like, see it, like, so and so came out, uh, like the rock right. mill gig that was happening, yeah. you know, and just that that personal connection with a real human being is is uh, probably the worst oh, part. Um, you know, friends of friends have experienced like worse like, with COVID deaths and stuff, and um, yeah. so we haven't really, we haven't been touched with that, you know that type of tragedy. So I'll, right. I'll say that as my worst. Um, the best thing, I think you kind of were talking about it, how like, you know, not gigging is, <laughs> and not being so busy is, is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know, I mean, um, that doesn't mean I can be productive all the time, you know, with the kids around and right. you know, we, we haven't, I mean, we don't have the kids in daycare and we don't, right. you know, we don't have the parents coming over to watch them. Um, right yet um just as far as recalibrating what you're doing yeah you know i spent a lot of time on mojo flow's website and my website yeah uh, very band's website and it's like you know if you're in the thick of gigging like not you're not that. gonna you're gonna think about doing it or chip away at it but you're not gonna go all in and spend hours on it you know so there's been a few things like that um early on uh speaking of websites i finally finished my uh studio website yeah i saw that um, it's called Stereo Mosaic. The slowdown, I think, has been good for these racial justice talks that, you know, have been uh, that are so needed, you yeah, know, yeah. and um, and so being able to like actually, you know, read a book about it or, right. or just try to absorb this information and and, you know, reevaluate, you know, yourself on that. What, you know, pertaining yeah. to that stuff, too, has been, you know, definitely you know, a good thing that there are a lot, a lot of changes needed and yeah. you know, it starts with you as a, as a person, you know, so, yeah, that's but it, it, but it is coming from a place of, of privilege where, you know, yeah. you know, not working has been great. Like, you know, right. a lot of people can't say that. Right. Um, so, you know, got to recognize that too, for sure. You know, I, I'm not sure what my third song is. I was going to ask you if you had mm. a George Berry song request. I like the one. I can't remember the name of it. It's kind of the Paul Simony kind of one. Oh yeah, I believe. Yeah. Oh wow, I haven't played that one in a while. I'll play it for you. Nice. All right, let's see. I think I was playing it with Jake, and he said Jake Levy, and he's like, I was kind of showing it to him as this slow thing, and he's like, uh, uh, oh, hold on a second. Like, uh... there's this. You know, and to me, I was hearing it as a Ray LaMontagne. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, what's that song? Right. Uh, let, let, it, let It Be Me. Yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. kind of, I think that was in, probably inspired by that song. Oh, cool. But then, so Jake's like, hold on, pick that up. That feels like uh, a... <laughs> and then I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> so that kind of became that. Um, so anyways, this is I Believe. It's your choice to believe. Nothing but you believe Cause I ain't living for nothing Cause I believe
Don't let them fool you. It's not that bad. Life can be so easy. Don't give up all you have. Don't let them fool you. It's your life to lead. Sometimes you need to go. Sometimes you need to bleed. It's your choice to believe the things that you believe. I ain't living for nothing. Cause I believe. Cause I believe. Cause I believe. Words can be like wine Sweet to taste and so sweet to your mind Next thing you know you're lying on the floor With your back to the sky Where your eyes can only see so high Words can be like wine Take you far away From the pain of your day But they always leave a stain It's your choice to believe The thing you believe I ain't dying for nothing Cause I believe I believe. All right, so you got a question. Yeah. I got another. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about um, producing your original music. Um, you know, we we worked on a track together. I don't know you everything, which, which might have been a different, you know, process than a lot of the other ones. There was no live band involved. Right, right, on, right. We did the track just you and me initially and then added some people on. Um, I know you've worked with Jeff Kayampa, who's a great producer in town. I'm sure you've worked with other people. Um, I guess just what is your, you know, approach? Do you do, you do a different approach for each project or song or album? Do you, diff um, you know, t t speak to that approach of how you produce your songs? Yeah, I've been, um, Topher James and Biscuit Brigade is another, like, we talked about organization. It's another container. So, like, yeah, I put all the stuff. There's there's things that go into that container. So, um, for me, it's like, um, you know, soul inspired, groove inspired, um, R and B inspired. You know, hi even hip hop kind of, you know, whatever flavor. Um, any of my like folky tunes, I, don't, I try not to go there with that, that yeah. band. Uh, and people have asked me like, why isn't? I'm like, that's not what that that band is. So. Um, just because that's how it has to work um, in my brain. And so every project I've done, and really from the start of that band, is try different things. So the first first album was four songs, and I did that at in Athens, Ohio, with Josh Antonuccio. Nice. With, like, Justin Campbell on drums and Jeff Bass on bass. That was before the band existed. So that was, nice. like, the, the rhythm section. And then uh, Dan the Shaw was playing. Like uh, organ and stuff. Neat. And then Dan like quickly left. <laughs> that was like right when Dan left for the works. Sweet. Right after we kind of recorded that record, he was done. And but but the whole idea was like I'll just kind of like make these albums and try to get the best players on them. So that's really what I've been doing. So then the next one, the next EP was Eight Bit Soul, and I did that with a, the coinciding of a video game that I had made with 
music that was in there too. So that was then, cool. Yeah, so that was four songs, and we did that at Capitol with like the free sessions, like the student sessions. Yeah. So we did. I hired Tony McClung to play drums on that, and Cody Olivia had been playing bass, so he played with us. And then um, Kyra Currenton, the drummer, was also she also played on those sessions. Nice. So we ended up having like that kind of free session as the bass, and it was just like. I was like, hey, I'll hire you guys and we'll do these free sessions so I don't have to pay for the session. So yeah, we did like pay for the pay for the talent. Yeah, so we just did like one or two takes and we it was fine. It was perfect. And then nice. um so I took that to like Oakley and then Oakley and I worked on that together and built Oakley. on top of that. Yeah, right. And then we did an EP at Orange Judio. That was these walls and that was with Mitch Detrick and then Josh Heber. The beginning of the Josh Heber era. <laughs> yes. So that's been great. And he's been kind of, you know, over the time you start to develop collaborators and um, yeah. people that are kind of like, okay, you're like in the band now. <laughs> so um, then we started doing singles and we did, I think we did, I don't know if I Don't Owe You Anything was next, but that was um, when kind of Jamela was around. So she was in and, you know, it's just like the, that kind of rotating thing because people move on and whatever the the after those eps i was like let's just like do singles and like try to get one song going with different people so oh so i did one with you but then then we did a session at music hall with keith hanlon nice and, and that was with david swank john allen and josh heber and we we just recorded everything live and that was pretty that was pretty different i re-record ended up re-recording vocals and guitar because it was just it wasn't good yeah but but everything they did was live. Um, so yeah, on that, those sessions, like if you, if you listen to the music hall sessions, which are actually called, I remember I, I touched them a little bit. I got, they did some of the harmonies, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, in the shed. That was what it was. Yeah. That was that session. So, um, those all like, I get it was a single. Um, yeah. And then, um, so a, a couple, I released that four sessions as singles over the years. So it took me a while, but it, you know, uh, I, it's like, you know, you're trying to get stuff as fast as possible, but, uh, so then now <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work. Yes, but, I know. Right. It's more, it's mostly money. If I had like the, just the budget, I'd be like, cool. Oh but, yeah. Uh, but spend yeah, a week, so, spend a week or two just in the studio, not finishing it all up. <laughs> right. Right. Budget. And time. Yeah. yeah. So the next thing, um, Glenn Davis and I had he produced a tune for me over Zoom, so that was really nice. Cool. Is that out? It's gonna be out soon. Um, I'm working on the video now, so the the newest thing I've been doing is trying to get make sure I have a video with every song I produce. So that takes even longer. Yes. Um, because I'm doing the video myself. Um, so that one's called No Need to Hide, and that'll be out. And that, that was just Glenn and me. He worked on the beat at his house, but I kind of directed, like, specifically, like, put that there, put that there. <laughs> and, and I had already had a demo of it, so he kind of produced the beat. And I wanted to do Men's something beast, like... man. Yeah. I wanted to do something in the box, more modern production. So it, it lent itself to just doing it like that. So I'm really excited about that tune. It's going to really catapult i think into the next kind of era of what i want to try i listen to like her and like alicia keys modern r&b artists like i yeah i want to i want to sound like them so it's like a lot of it's like fake drums and stuff you know Great. but so and I why, why put anything out unless it's leading to the right. next thing i guess right well and i think if Just... you like if you do a bunch of stuff putting a, a lot of stuff out there and you know something might be really well received something might just flop regardless of how much money or time you put into right. it right you know and, and the more you do the more you produce and put out there the more options you have on your side to be like well this time i'm going to do it this way and mm -hmm. if you didn't last time whatever like it doesn't matter like you're not going to look nothing back matters and, nothing <laughs> matters no but i think you're not going to look back in 20 years and be like i'm really glad i didn't release any of that stuff you know no shit <laughs> true true you're you might like, look back and say, oh, wow, I wish we would have, had, you know, spent an extra day mixing <laughs> or something, you know, or whatever. But yeah, S 70 years old and you're like, oh, I released one song. That was worth it. <laughs> it's, exactly. not, it's not going to be. You're going to be like, yeah, shit. And now well, I'm old. Plus it's <laughs> like, um, you know, putting too much time into like if the song isn't even that great or the arrangement isn't even, you know fire like well might as well just put out some content and then keep getting better and better songs better arrangements 
it, but you know that's my hope with my hope is like not youtube sales not spotify streams it's mm. it's more like patreon and like hey hey guys this is what i'm working on real There's, fans and and then you build that patreon page into something that actually makes money that makes sense to me because yeah. no one's gonna pay you every month if you're releasing one thing every year <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean yeah uh, it's, a, it's a tough balance there I'm gonna try this song. I get it once I, Sweet. once I talked about it. I get it. You see me as one-dimensional, but I got more tricks up my sleeve. I get it. You got your circle of friends, but am I that square to everybody else? Sorry for myself. I got a good thing going on. Everybody's got something to hide. Y'all feel lonely sometimes. Sometimes. Maybe I missed a couple calls But I swear I had ten things going on I know it Maybe I'm thinking too much Fear of rejection is a hell of a drug I don't know why I am feeling sorry for myself fun one i haven't done it for a while either Whew. it's gonna be weird when we go back and gigging it's like uh i don't I know, know how to play anything <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking too what's crazy is i didn't i didn't have any like gigs around the holiday you know like mm -hmm. right now where usually i would have you know work up a you know a list of christmas tunes or holiday tunes and uh right. i didn't do it this year so missed a year of uh yep relearning all those holiday tunes thanks for doing this man um really nice to see you and uh hopefully we'll get back together uh you know soon i'd love to work with you again with another tune dude that'd be great thank you so much for having me on and uh yeah, yeah that'd be awesome man see you next time it. yep see ya